Hello everyone. Welcome to Knittings and Sewings, episode 33. We are a podcast where we talk about all things fiber related, including knitting, spinning, weaving, sewing, crochet, and uh, a variety of things, uh, including hand sewing, embroidery, and that kind of thing. I wanted to welcome you back today. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded, and I had high hopes of wearing a finished garment today. I was hoping that I would wear either my crochet tank top that I've been showing you over the last several episodes, or that I would at least be able to show you a finished um, poppy uh, vest top that I was going to make in the sewing workshop that I took right after our last podcast. And I had a two-day workshop and really enjoyed taking that but I will just say at this point that I did not have um, an object that I can wear and uh, it, it kind of turned out to be a disaster. So I'm going to talk about all those things. We're not going to have any finished objects. I'm going to just uh, talk about some things I've been working on and plans that are coming up. I feel like right now I'm in a sort of a transition period. It's getting to be mid-summer now, mid to late summer. We've had very, very hot weather, so I'm going to try to record this before it gets even hotter. But even early in the morning, it's becoming very hot and humid. So I wanted to just talk to you about several things and several things that will be coming up in the works. But I do feel a period of transition coming on. So uh, we'll talk more about that. And I do want to always just be honest with you and show the failures as well as the successes that I have in my crafting because I think it's easy in our crafting life to see podcasters who come on and show you sweater after sweater that have turned out beautifully and uh, it's easy to forget the failures and the missteps and the things that we end up scrapping entirely and I do have a few examples today of that happening in my craft life so I want to be honest about it and share those things. Um, so we'll get started. First up, the crochet tank top that I was working on that was going to be vertical and it was a very simple mindless tank top you recall me saying. Um, well it was a little bit too mindless because it turned out I was just crocheting away not paying a great deal of attention and uh, found out that there were some major problems with it. So I'm going to begin by showing you an excerpt before I ripped it out of what was going wrong with that. So here we go. Well, I wanted to show you that even though I hoped I would be finished with the crochet tank top at this point, and um, I was cruising along feeling really confident, almost cocky in how well this fabric was knitting up or actually crocheting up, sorry. And uh, then I happened to notice the other day, first of all, I had an initial disaster in that I had about that, I had 30 something inches of fabric crocheted when I realized that I had changed the way that I was crocheting it. So I re tried to re-enact uh, this because at first I just ripped that out and was redoing that. And then um, I decided, well, I wanted to show you that mistake as well. Because I had put this project down for a couple of weeks while I was working on my knitted tank, I'd forgotten that you were supposed to crochet in the front loop. And so instead, right around this area is an example of it. I started crocheting in the back loop. So you can tell that it makes quite a different stitch from over in this regular area over here where I was crocheting in the front loop. So definitely crocheting in the front or back loop or the whole loop makes a big difference in crochet in how the stitch appears. But also a bigger problem I noticed um, was that I also was inadvertently decreasing. So I started off at the beginning of the project with this measuring 17 inches. And so that was fine. It was going along fine. Then we go down after a little while, I'm down to 15 and a half inches. Uh, then, well, there's still 15 and a half. Then I go down here, it's 15. Here we have 15. 
then we go down to 14, take a dive there. So uh, finally we go down to, whoops, 13 here, I think. Yeah, 13. And at the end, I'm all the way down to 12 inches. Almost even less than that, 11 and a half, something like that. So there was a big discrepancy, as you can tell. I gradually was decreasing, not even being aware of it. And so this is a problem. I'm probably going to have to unravel all the way, way up to where I was up here probably and start over. Um, but it's important to note that you can inadvertently increase or decrease fairly easily in crochet if you're a newer crocheter. And uh, so um, anyway, I was not paying attention and just that's something that I wasn't counting my stitches. So it's important in crochet to count your stitches every now and then just as it is in knitting. And so that's a lesson I've learned. I'm going to now have to figure out a solution. But I wanted to share this with you and also to share the video I found that's very informative in showing you how you can avoid inadvertently increasing or decreasing in crochet. So I have, now that I've realized that that, that tank top is not going to work out, I first thought I could rip out just part of it, but then I started realizing that the 17 inches that I had started with was way too long for my body. I was going to need like a 12 to 14 inch length. So the whole thing I decided to scrap and I was also getting kind of irritated with the splittiness of using the double yarn. If you recall, I was holding the um, yarn double with the true boo and so um, that was not working out holding them both together. I was getting a lot of splitting and uh, so the whole thing was just, you know, even though I loved the fabric it was producing, I was thinking that for summer um, that fabric was going to be a little bit too heavy and the yarn too splitty. So I have decided to scuttle that project, at least for the present time. And because we're already at the very tail end of July and uh, summer will soon be over, I need to start thinking about what I'm going to be making for the fall makes. So I did decide to put aside that project. However, what I decided to start instead, I wanted to get something successful on the needles that I could, or on the hook, that I could uh, work on. And so I got my new crochet hook out that I told you about last time. Um, this is an interchangeable crochet hook set. Um, and I'll put up the link to the uh, the company that sells this. It's a family owned mom and pop shop and I really love this hook as I've come to use it and I've tried a couple of different of the hooks because um, it's interchangeable and I decided to keep them in my little eyeglass case because everything fits perfectly in here including the little needles or the little hooks that are interchangeable so that's working out really well for me so an eyeglass case is the perfect size now, what I'm making is several granny squares. I just wanted the simplicity of granny squares. And so when we were uh, driving to St. Louis last weekend, I started working on these granny squares and experimenting on what yarn and needle size was the right one. I'm going to make a purse, and it is called... I'll put a link to it. It's called the Granny Square Tote, but it's a small purse. And um, so I'm making, I'm going to need 13 squares, and right now I have six. I'm going to use uh, shades of purple, gray, blue, and different cool colors in the cool color family, because that's mostly what I wear in my wardrobe. So I'm going to start on this purse. The first step is sewing or crocheting the five by five squares. It's about five by five and I haven't blocked them yet but these are acrylic and what I'm making them out of is two different Karen Cakes yarns. The Karen Big Cakes and I have one in the colorway Bumbleberry and the other in the colorway Nightberry. So it, these are both Karen Cakes 
And what I'm making, this is the one that is the bumbleberry. It has the grays and the blues and the teal. And then this is um, the one I've used the most of, which is the nightberry. And it has the purples and different shades of purple and violet and lavender and that type of thing. So that's what I'm using for, for the yarn for the granny squares. But I'm really enjoying working on these. They are fun, um, not mindless. I'm going to avoid mindless for a while and pay attention to what I'm doing uh, because I seem to be making some mistakes. But I wanted to mention that that will be um, something, hopefully, that I can work on and uh, have some success on. Next, I want to talk about Tour de Fleece. Again, I had hoped that I would get a lot of yarn made. Um, and I didn't get nearly as much as what I hoped. I think I have a total of 425 yards of two-ply yarn that I completed. So I have, you know, the brown, the gray, the charcoal colors, and uh, then the fleece, which I'm still spinning on. Uh, it is going to be that chocolate brown and that's going to be the fleece itself, the espionage fleece that I'm spinning. So this will all become part of a shawl later on. But I did finish, I think it's 425 yards. So at least I did something. Uh, and I did manage to spin most days. I did not spin every day. But I'm going to continue spinning now that we're into the Olympics. And by the way, what a fantastic Olympic opening ceremony I watched yesterday. That was just mind-blowing, the one that they're doing in Paris. Um, I really enjoyed watching that. And so I think as I watch the Olympics over the next, you know, many days and hours, I'm going to try to work on my spinning as well as my granny squares. So hopefully that will end up, you know, I'll end up getting some more done. But I did not accomplish as much during Tour de Fleece as I had hoped. Next, I want to talk about um, another failed project. I really enjoyed the sewing workshop class that I took. It was a Zoom workshop. It lasted two days, and um, it was a, supposed to be where you would listen to the, to the lecture with everyone and then go away and sew for a while and come back. And it was over two days. I took off on a Friday and also spent last Saturday uh, or a week ago last Saturday taking that class. I really learned a lot and I'm very grateful that I took the class but I will say that the project itself did not turn out as I hoped and I don't plan on finishing this particular one. I might finish some version of it later or I might just pick another pattern because I do love vests and want to have a vest but I don't know that this one is the ideal. I'm going to take a moment and adjust the camera so you can see more of the whole mannequin. So you can see the basic shape and how this uh, design is working out here. This shows you more of the whole vest. Um, but basically it is, first I want to show you how it starts. It's kind of turned out to be like an origami-like pattern. It starts off, well I'll show you a picture. Um, Bob will put up a picture of how it started off as I cut out the fabric. It's really one large piece. Instead of being, you know, several pieces you put together, in some of your more simpler patterns you may have, you know, two or three or four pieces. But in this one, it was one solid, big, large, kind of uh, oddly shaped rectangle with mini mouse ears in the, in the part that where the underarms will be. And I want to just show you, I had a little, I finally figured out that we had a little mini version of it that we could put together in the pattern itself, a little uh, kind of schematic diagram that you could fold up and help you figure out the basic shape. But it was really very much like putting together an origami uh, thing. It started off like this in a rectangle and then to even figure out how 
to put my fabric together, it was hard enough cutting it out, but then once I tried to put it together, I finally realized that the sides folded in and this back part, the collar looks like a hood, but it's really not a hood. And then there is a large asymmetrical piece in the back. And I'm going to show you here on this. So this is the front now, and it is, in case you think I sewed wonky, no, it is an asymmetrical uh, piece on the bottom also. So the, the vest is two different lengths in the front. And that is not, I'll move this again so you can see that. There you go. You can see that it is asymmetrical. And that was not my sewing error. That is how the pattern is. Then also, you'll notice I did not do the arm bindings because at that point I had decided it was becoming a waste of time to do this. Um, it fit a little tight in the chest. This mannequin, Millie, is my actual size. I've made sure that she is my actual size. So to put a button on this would be pretty difficult because it, my bust area wouldn't allow for it. I could have made a full bust adjustment, but it would have been pretty difficult with this pattern. And with the way it was looking, I wasn't sure I wanted to take the time to do that. Then on the back, let me turn the back around, you have this kind of hood that isn't really a hood, a collar, that is a triangular collar, and then you have the asymmetrical on the bottom. It would have been a great idea to make a mini version of this on maybe a Barbie doll because that's what one lady did and it helped her get the idea of what pattern, how this was gonna turn out, how to cut it and how to put it together. And so uh, that would have been a great idea. I wish I'd done that. But instead I used my kit fabric thinking this would be easy and it really wasn't. So I didn't put on the binding yet, the binding strips, the tape that goes around here. I didn't want to bother doing that because I know that this is for me going to be, um, you know, a project that I'm not going to complete. But I wanted to show you the failure because I do love the sewing workshop patterns. The instruction was amazing. I learned a lot of different things, um, how to do different things like the binding on the arm and the, how to do mitered corners properly. There's a lot of things that you're learning with this. Um, but and it, w it would have been an easy make. And again, I think that some people's probably turned out much better than mine. But I did want to be honest and tell you that this was, for me, a big fail. I think what I'm going to be doing is looking at some of the other sewing workshop patterns that would be better on my body type. So probably I'll be working with the peony vest. They have one P-E-O-N-Y peony vest that I do have that pattern and I feel that that will fit my body and work out much better for me. So you'll be seeing me in the future maybe working on that. And it's one I've considered on doing with the fabric that I'm currently working on with the Van Gogh fabric that I'm weaving on. So we'll talk about that possibility later. But for right now, I want to say this is my sewing fail of the week. I want to talk about another thing that I had put aside in the past. We'll remove the poppy for the moment. If you remember many, many months ago, I think it was March of, well, a long time ago, over a year ago. A year ago, last March, I had started the Pinguono vest, or the Pinguono coat. And I just wanted to um, say that I'm considering getting this out again. I haven't worked on it in some time, and I don't know how this is going to work out or if it will work out, but I'm considering this is a Stephen West uh, jacket. And it's a very large, not form-fitting, but a very large, loose kind of jacket. And so I did pull it out the other day from my closet and think, should I try to get that on working on that again, possibly for a fall? If I were to work on it again, it's all kinds of shades of fuchsia and uses up a lot of scrap yarn. And so I'm just considering getting back to this. 
Since we're in the dead of summer right now, I thought it might be fun to talk about a summer reading suggestion. I just finished this book in, in a few days, which I'm not a real fast reader, so to say I finished it, I started it on a Saturday and finished it on a Tuesday, is saying a lot. Uh, the name of the book is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell, and it's a suspense novel. Uh, it just is one of those kind of books that you cannot put down, literally. I started it and just was drawn into the story immediately. First time I've ever read Lisa Jewell as an author, but this is excellent. And what it's about is a woman who is at a restaurant eating and on her birthday, having her celebrating her birthday, and she runs into another uh, woman who says she's her birthday twin. And they're both 45 years old and were born at exactly the same hospital on exactly the same day. And so uh, that begins what is a chance acquaintance becomes a more in-depth, intertwined relationship between the two women. And um, it's just fascinating um, how the story evolves. One woman is a podcaster named Alex Summers, and she begins interviewing this other woman and, and her whole story unfolds and along with it their relationship grows and uh, the story just becomes compelling and fascinating and again it's suspense you're trying to figure out what all is really going on thus the title none of this is true uh, it's hard to know what is true and what is false in this story but it's just such a page turner and totally a wonderful summer read. I found that I liked it so much, in fact, I went out and bought the Audible version so that I could continue reading it in the car. I started with this paper or uh, hardback as we were driving uh, back from St. Louis, and I ended up going and getting the Audible so that I could listen to it while I was driving to and from work in the car because I just couldn't get enough of it. And I will say that if you do decide to get the Audible it version, it is excellent. The sound effects in it and the different voices, the characterization makes it come alive even more on the Audible version. So I would say either way you read it, you will love this book if you like suspense. And it kind of reminds me of the type of story, if you ever read Gone Girl, that was out several years ago. I think it was maybe around a 2016 book. It was one of the first in this type of genre. But I found this much more satisfying and more in depth. It made my mind ponder the characters. And uh, even when I wasn't reading the book, I was thinking about it. And it's the kind of book that I think is going to stick with me longer than A Gone Girl did. Uh, I don't remember the exact plot of Gone Girl now that it's been several years. But with this book, this one, Lisa Jewell's book, it's, it's really fascinating. And again, a great character study as well as being a page turner. And one thing I would suggest is that if you're working on a project where you want to just keep knitting like on a, say, stockinette or something that you want to just zoom on uh, and kind of you know, get a lot done, this book would be one that you could listen to on Audible while you knit or crochet and you would really find yourself putting in a lot of uh, effort. You know, in other words, you'd want to keep reading so you'd keep on working on your project. So I think this is a great motivator for project knitting and I, I would just give it a five star rating, five out of five. So um, if you like suspense, go get a copy. And honestly, I'm now on to another uh, book by Lisa Jewell because luckily she's written like 21 books. But it, it is set in the UK. It's a UK author. And um, just give it a try. Okay, I'm out here on the deck early of a morning right after we had a big storm and the temperatures have lowered a bit by about 10 degrees. We've been having some really oppressive heat and humidity lately. So um, I wanted to just um, cover a couple of things 
Number one, I had met, recommended the book by Lisa Jewell, None of This is True. And I did want to, it occurred to me last night that I might want to add there a caveat that for those of you who are, this is a psychological, dark psychological type of story. It's a psychological thriller. So for those of you who are triggered by some of the darker elements in the story, such as domestic violence, it, it isn't, you know, something that all people uh, want to read about. So I did want to warn that it does have a darker element. And so do check that out before you dive into this. If this is something you want to avoid, then this may not be the book for you. I also want to mention that right now, um, I am wearing the top that I made earlier uh, in the summer and I decided to add the buttons down the v-neck to help cover up that little seam area that I had. So I wanted to show you with the buttons. I'm getting ready to wear this to work today and I'm very happy uh, with this particular um, sweater. So also I want to say that I have decided to go against my saying all summer that I was not going to participate in any knit-alongs uh, or any mystery knit-alongs. I do want to confess that I am going to participate in the Katie Jones Hobie mystery knit-along that's going to be called something like um, Ski a Pre. It's based on um, it is a mystery and along, so I don't know what the whole sweater will look like, but I do know that it's going to be kind of have the look of a 1980s vintage ski sweater. And my grandmother, I remember her, um, some of her knitting magazines from the 1980s, I remember those ski looking sweaters and those were appealing to me uh, at the time. I wasn't a good enough knitter at that time to jump into them. I think this will be kind of a beginner friendly project. It's supposed to have a lot of, you know, elements to it that will be fun and challenging, like some color work, some striping. Um, but I decided to jump into it and also Carolyn and Judy are going to be joining me on that mystery knit along and it starts September 5th. I did go ahead and buy the kit. If you wish, you can also join on this. The pattern itself will be free. You just have to sign up for it. But the um, I bought the kit. They do have a kit. And from looking at the yarns that come with it, I definitely think those appeal to me. And um, so I did decide to join in and signed up for the kit. So in advance of that, I'm going to need to be finishing up my Pinguono jacket. I have decided to finish the Pinguono. And so that's another thing that I wanted to tell you is I was still weighing it for the past week if I should do it or not. I do want to get that finished hopefully before the Mystery Knit Along starts with Hobie. So I'm going to put a link to the Mystery Knit Along should any of you decide you'd like to join in as well. Uh, and so, you know, that's up to you. But uh, I did want to mention that because I keep saying I'm not going to do a mystery knit along. I'm not going to do a mystery knit along. And then Katie Jones comes along and sweeps me away. Uh, so here I go. <laughs> what can I say? Well, it's time now to for me to get to work and for to say goodbye. I, I want to say, as I always do, love what you're making and wear what you make. Till next time, goodbye everybody.